yo, welcome back to the In Game Podcast. I'm Lynch Hunt, and today we know you got the co-host over here, but we got a guest. Tell them who you are, big fella. Man, I'm Rod Brown. No, oh, just Rod Brown? I'm Rod Brown. Just Rod Brown? I'm Rod Brown. Man. Yo, today we brought my man, man. Look, Jerome Myers, man. Say what's up to the people, big dog. What's going on, fam? Yo, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So you always on the other side, you know, watching and, yeah. you know, adding value, commenting, and things like that. Today we got you on this side, man. It's an honor to have you, man. Yes, sir. And yes, sir. Uh, the people, you know, need to know who you are first and foremost, man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, why don't you tell them a little bit of something about what you do and why we, we only bring big dogs on the show straight <laughs> like that. So let me tell you something before you get started. First and foremost, um, you only the second guest that we've ever had. Great. All right. Yes. Without question. Now, remember, the first guest was Adrian Smith, 50 McDonald's. Yeah. So if we mm. bring in somebody on, they got to be a Oh, mm. <laughs> big dog. So mm. y'all already know if I got somebody in the joint is because yeah. they've added tremendous value to our lives already. Oh, and uh, the man is up here right now, man. Tell them a little bit about who you are, man. Yeah, Get man. Just grateful to be here, bro. First of all, grateful to be here. So I'm Jerome Myers. I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina. My Fair last enough. job in corporate America, mm. I built a $20 million division for a Fortune 550 company. I started out as employee number two on January 13th. By the end of September, I had 100, 175 people on my team. By the end of the year, we had $6 million in profit on $20 million in business. Mm. And then I get the phone call at 4.55 on December 24th. And it says, hey, Jerome, you guys have had an amazing year. And I know you and I have been going back and forth for the past few weeks, but we need to let half the people go. Mm. And I was like, man, I, I wasn't impacted in uh, 2009. I was like, this is crazy. And so I spent the holidays figuring out what I was going to do. And on the backside of that, we start back in January. By the end of January, I, it's down to like 80 people working on the team. Mm. We make another run. And uh, same time of year, I, I knew the phone call was coming. I was like, I, I can't do this corporate America thing anymore. So I leave corporate move into real estate full time, build a real estate portfolio, consistent mainly of apartments. Um, then I, I realized I miss something from corporate. I was a lone wolf out here. And I was like, man, what do I actually miss from being engaged with the people? And what I realized was the only thing that I miss was I, I couldn't have done that without you. People walking in the office and like, man, you gave me opportunity. You gave mm -hmm. me a chance. You gave me a start. You gave me that advice. You cared when nobody else cared. And so I dove into coaching and uh, we've had a crazy run, help people double and triple their businesses over the course of a year, figuring out strategies, pe helping people exit now. And it's just been a wild, wild, wild ride, man. But that's a little bit about me and a grateful coach for Jerome, the opportunity. Coach, coach Lynch. Coach, coach Byers. Yeah, old school, man. You coach remember Rod. back in the day, I used to have, you know, that's Jacob the jeweler, yeah, um, yeah. you know, Bill the, the horseshoe maker yeah. or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. Coach, yeah, your last name. Coach Jerome, Coach yeah. Lynch. I'm loving it. <laughs> you I'm Coach Rod, too. Nah, nah, yeah, nah, they nah. put it uh, Oh, you put, put that thing in the chat. In the chat. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> Ever oh, since yeah, you yeah, coached me up on this, I've that had was, the best year of my life, that Coach Rod. That, that was just a one-off, man. Y'all, y'all are good, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all are cool with people not doing what you tell them to do or not what you're, you know. Y'all, and I just that that right there, boy. Who like you come to me and you ask me how should I go about doing this, and I give you practical, you know, um, ideas based on experience, not the you know theoretical stuff, and then you're like, well. Well, I don't know about that, or I, I want to. Y'all are good at 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 handling that. I'm not good at. I'm handling not good that. at that. Let me tell you. So I, I used to do that, right? I call those people assholes. Okay. Right, and I realized that they needed to do something in order to make me okay if they chose not to listen to me. Mm. And so I no longer participate if they don't compensate me. Mm. They pay me not to get mad if they don't get the result. Got I'm addicted it. to their result, but if they don't want right. their result, then I'll take the money as a consolation prize. Okay, that's real, okay, real good. That's a difference, though. That's that's a difference because I, I mean, y'all get paid to coach. I just, I just, you know, out of the kindness of my heart, which maybe I need to switch that so that I, I, I I'll have a motivation not to be up, be so upset, and you know, 
and 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 if you don't do it, you just don't do it. Yeah, as long as the check anyway. clears, right? As long as the the cash app goes cha ching. I think I mean, there's a lot to that, man. Um, you know, the kindness of your heart, and I mean your experience, and you don't talk about it enough. I don't feel, but your experience is so valuable. And like when we we go to the resilience training facility, mm -hmm. you, you got to go through the struggle, right? Yeah. There's got to be some sacrifice in order to get the outcome, so that you can actually appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And so, if they don't have to pay a toll of yeah. some sort, right. some contribution, and they don't have to pay you. They can donate to charity. We know Whatever. you don't need the money, right? But right. making some contribution in order to get exchange, it sets up a relationship where the expectation is high. Right. If I pay you a lot of money, I'm expecting you to show up full on right. for me, not just kind of some throw off right. advice. You're actually invested in the outcome. And you know, the more I paid for coaching and masterminds and so on, the more I realize how important that is and how the level of expectation rises mm -hmm. when there's some type of transaction that happens. Gotcha. Yeah. There's tend to be more value too, right? In terms of the individual when they, when they write a check versus when they just get that information for free. I, I value things more. I know people will give me things. You're a very generous person and you offer to give me things that you've from your lived experience and out of the generosity of your heart, like, man, it doesn't matter. But it, I don't care if it's a $25 shirt, you spent your time, you spent your energy, you thought through this. And I think it's important that I give you something in exchange for that. And so, yeah, man, I, I see a lot of people specifically in our culture and you guys were talking about culture <laughs> last week, culture. right? Sure. Culture. You, in our culture, we talk about help a lot and help means that I don't have to do anything. I just wait for you to do it for me. And when I go out into other cultures, that's not the case. I can help you with that problem. Yeah. And they fully expect you to ask, well, what's that going to cost? Or what do I have to do in order for you to do that? Yeah. But they expect some reciprocity. They expect yeah. an exchange. Yeah. And for some of us, we've got this learned helpless, helplessness going on where it's like, oh, man, well, I just need to wait for somebody to come save me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ain't yeah. nobody coming to save you when the, you're playing in the big leagues. And the help is yeah. different, too. It's different. So the help, what I see a lot, and we touched on it talking about politicians. They want to help <laughs> me stay in my current situation, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, okay, you, you bring me a, a, a Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, that doesn't help lift me out of poverty. It helps me temporarily, and it helps leave me in the same situation waiting on the turkey dinner next Thanksgiving versus helping me, you know, uh, learn how – helping me have a turkey farm. Right, or helping me – Teach you know, a man to fish versus yeah, giving them exactly. Fish, yeah, exactly. So – and the help – typically looks different in other communities where it's like significant help where we're going to help lift you out of a whole situation that um, is detrimental to your culture. So yeah, the help looks different. Um, Y'all know what I'm loving right about now. What is it? I'm loving this NIL situation. Name, image, and likeness. Mm -hmm. uh, Shador Sanders is driving a Maybach. He is. I love it. But did his daddy pay I for it? It's now. Shador has the second highest NIL value behind Bronny James. Shador's is somewhere around three and a half million. Uh -huh. Projected. Bronny's is somewhere around six million. Neither one of them have played a lick of professional basketball. And a lot of these cop no, 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 I take that back. A lot of the college students that are receiving the NIL deals, right? Because it's it's like the NFL. Like you take the top ten percent mm -hmm. of the NFL players off of a team, you're you're looking at C suite salaries for everybody else. But they just think, oh, they're playing professional sports, mm -hmm. they're making all this money. But just C suite salaries. Same thing with NIL. You got you got kids. It's the have or have nots. And I just love the fact that these kids are earning this money. Um, based on their name, their image and likeness. Um, it's still a fraction of what the universities are getting. I mean, look at the impact on, you know, Colorado University. See, and they're trying to, they're trying to put for a, like two years, right? Insane. At 500 bucks a seat. No, I saw something no, that was 5,000. It's, it's five, four, four grand. Yeah, four two, grand a seat. Grand. I'm saying yeah, the average, awesome. average seat price. Oh, right. Average seat price is around 500 bucks, right? But I just love it, man. Now, the only thing I'm concerned about is, um, their dedication to the sport, right? Are these shiny things a distraction? 
Um, and if, if while you're earning this money and spending it, uh, hopefully you're buying an apartment building. Hopefully you're buying some land. Hopefully you're buying, you know, you're making some investments versus just buying liabilities. But I, I absolutely love it, man. How do you, you got a lot of people who are like, it's just, this isn't how it's supposed to be. This is crazy. This is unheard of. I think it's evolution. Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely evolution. Well, why isn't it supposed to be? Because it's never been. I mean, I it's never been. It's never been legally, right? Like, uh, what's your boy play for SMU? Eric Dickerson. He had a he had a Trans Am. He had a Trans Am sitting in his driveway that was worth more than a house, right? That was way back then, though. Yeah. Uh, Trans But yeah, yeah, with the with the with the, with the, there, with the bird on the hood. Uh, yeah, 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 that joint. Yeah, and so. Um, I just love the fact that they're getting, uh, you know, they're getting paid. The ones that actually earn it, right? But why? I, I still don't get it. Why shouldn't it be? Because, I mean, college it's an amateur football, sport. But college football stadiums are larger than professional they football are. stadiums. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I, when I played college football, I mean, it was forty hours a week. It's a job, right? Between practice, weight. Did you get a stipend? No, I mm. didn't even have a football scholarship. I had an academic scholarship. Wow. Now, I'm not going to say that my football coach didn't help me get an academic scholarship, right? right. But yeah, I had yeah. an academic scholarship. Right. So that was, that was your compensation, that, that, that degree. I struggle with that, man. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. And I struggle with that. I mean, maybe if you future pace it and say, hey, you would have a student loan and it, you would pay this much in interest. And so maybe you can inflate the value that way or do some type of discounted cash flow calculation. But if the school is making however many million dollars per game right is in who are they coming to see the band <laughs> nah at i don't A&T. know some hbcu at they might be, they're coming they might be coming to, to see the band, band. but <laughs> right where who are they coming to see in colorado oh they're coming to see or alabama come and see dion and, and his sons and oregon yeah that's who they play this weekend coming up not to date the pod but that's who's coming up how do you feel about that lunch? Like, would you be cool with your kids dope. getting? I mean, this. I mean, you you still gotta you still gotta parent. Yeah. You know what I mean? At Great the end point. of the day, mm-hmm. you, you got two things, right? I need you to tell the people, what's the downfall of men? Hmm? What's two the things? downfall ah, of men? The two things. Ah. I need you to tell the people. So my pastor back in the day told me that uh, he had a meeting with us, and he was just straight, straightforward with us. He said, uh, "Fellas." Um, there are two things that can bring a strong man to his knees. That's money or pussy. Ooh. And that's how he said it. He man. said it like that. He said it yeah. just like that. Your pastor a real one, man. He said it For just sure. Like that. But he gave him the best game that he could ever get. Now, right like now. That. And I'll never forget. When that. you you young, mm. you got a lot of money. Oh, it's a problem. And they put it's a problem. It's a problem. Now, I don't know who, you know, is gonna be able to help him with that, but if you don't deal with that. Um, that lust and that 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 um, that what do you call it? That material, uh, um, yeah. that because because you get bit, you get yeah. bit early. Yeah, yeah. and and ten years and removed, it's worse now, but the man. vibe is still in my veins. It's worse baby. now. You hear what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So we not the only users getting high within the game. Absolutely. You, you understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like Jay spit these lines, and it wasn't just entertainment. It was literally some right. stuff that you need to dissect because yeah. once you get a taste of it, or once you get bit by it, hey, you know you're going you're going to do something strange for some change. So you got to be, be careful, man. You right. know what I'm saying? I, I know. Until you have a um, a sea moment. Hey, until you have a seat moment. You have a seat moment. But by then, what's the seat moment? Hold on, y'all <laughs> trying to <laughs> y'all dropping jewels. What's yeah. the seat so moment? So a seat moment is a significant emotional event. Okay, and we've all had it. Like we've we've hit the bottom. We lost oh, everything. Yeah. We've you know been to some places and spaces that you know some people would never survive. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, you know, I saw something on your timeline before. It was like a crashed up car or something like that. Talk, talk yeah, a little bit yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. That had to be a sea moment of some sort. Oh, I don't even know the backstory behind yeah, it. Yeah, that was it. that was wild. So I, I graduated college, bought a house, and was working for like a month. And I went to get my first haircut, mm. right, in the new area. It was rural Virginia. And I left that Saturday morning, didn't use any GPS, said I'll find my way. Mm-hmm. I'll find a barbershop. And... uh I drove around and I was living in a town that didn't have any stoplights. It had one 
two, three, four stop signs. Yeah. What town was this? Cumberland, Virginia. Never heard of it. Cumberland, Virginia. Uh, shout out Cumberland, Virginia. Uh, shout out Cumberland, Virginia. <laughs> and on the way back, I'm coming back from the large town, Farmville, and uh, I'm going about 55 miles per hour. And there's a cop, and he stopped to make a left turn. And then three cars behind him is a dump truck. And he wasn't paying attention. And so traffic's at a full stop. I'm coming in the opposite direction. He hits the brakes, crosses the center line, hits me head on. Dang. Mm. I'm going 50 pounds. Wow. And so lady walks up to the car. No, I was a guy. A guy walks up to the car. He's like, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. I'm like, I'm not dead. What you, are you, hear talking him, about? you hear him talking about Yeah, you yeah. Dead. I mean, all the glasses bust out. I got glass and all in my arms. Like, I still got all the scars. Broke my kneecap. Broke both my femurs. And... uh <sighs> I'm sitting there, I'm trapped, right? We're an hour from Richmond, Virginia. The dashboard is on my legs and I can feel the heat from the engine. The guy's like, he's dead, he's dead. And I was like, I'm not dead, man. Can I use your phone? And he's like, man, you got blood all over you. What do you mean can you use my phone? Wow. I'm like, all right, well, call this number and whatever you do, don't talk to any women in the house. I need you to talk to my dad. Wow. My parents happened to be visiting that weekend. And so they called my dad, my dad comes and He's standing with me while I'm trapped in the car waiting for the helicopter to come in. And so eventually the helicopter gets there. They take the jaws of life, cut me out the car, and then they pull, they jack the dashboard off of me. And then they pull me out the car, put me on a stretcher and uh, fly me back to Virginia or MCV, right? The Medical College of Virginia. And so I'm there and I'm like, I'm conscious, right? And they start taking the glass out my arm and, then I go into surgery for 14 hours. Mm. 14 and so hours. it's like, I knew in that moment, like it didn't really set in until I woke up after the first surgery. And I'm in ICU, right? They got tubes. I mean, they got all this stuff. And like my mom is there. And like, I remember waking up and asking for the girl that I was in a relationship with at the time. And my mom's like, she's not here. I was like, what do you mean? Because right before they took me back for surgery, I was like, hey, please don't leave me. And you talk about a C moment. It's like, like I was taking care of you. I was doing all this stuff for you. And like in the time of need, Mm -hmm. you weren't there. And there was some other stuff going on behind the scenes that I didn't really understand. But when I woke up, it was this feeling of loneliness. And I think with the C moments, and some people call them other things, but with the C moments, you got to actually face that adversity. Mm -hmm. You got to face that thing that you fear. Mm -hmm. And so for me, being, even though my mom was there, right, being there alone was that C moment for me. It was like, and then, you know, I'm in a wheelchair, so I can't take care of myself. I got all these surgery wounds, and I need help. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you go back to this place. In addition to that, like, taking away my ability to walk and so mm. all that independence all of that macho all of that ego mm-hmm. just kind of evaporated from me and i i had to really understand like it can go like that yeah and it didn't matter what it was like all the material things can go mm-hmm. all of your independence can go and if you don't have people in your life who truly want to offer that mutual benefit as we were talking mm-hmm. about earlier like they go too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. First ones go. First ones. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's what that's the backstory. Yeah. I don't tell well, that story sure. very yeah, often, yeah, man. Yeah. It, it takes you to a dark place. But it was August thirteenth, two thousand five, man. I was. Um, I, so, I, I mean, I think honestly, I think you should tell it more. Um, I, you know, I, I think you, I think you, you're calling it dark, um, but I believe you're healed. Um, you know, uh, if, if, if you're not healed, then it takes you to a dark place. I just did three interviews with people and they, sometimes you got to dance around their see moments because they're not healed. Yeah. A lot of times mm. it's, a it, it's, it's a bad breakup and it's a guy, you know, something like that. And they don't want to talk about that stuff, but the, 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 the wound is the place where the light enters your body. I'll say that one more time and a little yeah. slower. That's the only way. The, 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 the wound is the place where the light enters the body. And I say that because you literally will, if you dissect 
the the womb or you hold it up to the light you can actually extract the wisdom from it yeah. you can actually get the lessons from 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 the loss um that's why we're so good with uh turning our failures into you know successes in the bags and yeah, stuff like right. that so if you don't have these failures and to these degrees then you never do the reflections you never do the you know all the work that you need to find so, solutions and you know identify the problems and build character and you know resiliency and all the things that actually come with the loss yeah. you know you play sports so you played sports so you know it was a reason why monday was film day it was film day because it was reflection and it's the first thing that actually needs to 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 be done for knowledge yourself so you're telling people they need to um fail fail to to win you need to without question but what so you gotta you gotta fail <laughs> fail fast fail a lot to win well, at least you find in, in failing fast and failing a lot, um, you, you literally find out what works and what don't, doesn't work. You know, mm -hmm. if you if you're winning and you're um, you know, you don't one thing and it works one way, then if, if, if something happens, then you, you don't have the ability or the skill set to adapt because you've been doing things one way the entire time. The time like yeah. I have a, I have a, a, a tremendous amount of resourcefulness because I've never had all of the pieces to the fucking puzzle to push your shit together and i've always kept putting shit together right and i'm able to adapt and adjust to evolve you know what i'm saying and while other people you know become extinct and whatever it is that they're doing you know what i'm saying and yeah. they got to move and change lanes <laughs> and shit like that yeah, yeah I, 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 I don't believe failure exists until you quit absolutely until you it. stop until you just say all right well it's always too early to quit I mean, when you're a fighter. Oh, come on, man. There's got to, sometimes just, you need to throw the throw towel. Throw the towel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. Like, I think we can overcommit, right? Just, oh. we're going to force, I, I struggle with forcing things these days. Like, yeah. I think there's a flow, especially when you're on purpose and in purpose. I think there's a flow that needs to happen for you to get to the thing. Now, you can brute force it, but I, I've just found, like, the biggest wins. Yeah. It feels like it's ordered. It feels like yeah. it's ordained for me. Yeah. So, yeah. So go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, like the the, the wealthiest people in the world, um, some of the wealthiest businesses, is literally that's their model. So if you look at venture capitalists, mm -hmm. their model is to we got to we got to we got to do this deal, do this deal, do this deal Ten for one, with the expectation that a bunch of those deals mm -hmm. are going to fail, but there's going to be the unicorn that's going to make up. 10x of the previous deals that right but does that does that feel like flow because like nine of them are failing and and one is going to go is that well, flow so my thing? my if i'm a vc i don't look at the failure in the event i look at over time what's my success my yeah. ultimate success right absolutely so this is just a that's a game that's not a season so if i fail one through nine those nine, those are games. Mm -hmm. They're playing. That's not a season. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so, um, yeah, I'm, 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 you know. Yeah, I only said that because he spoke to flow. You know, he spoke to gotcha. flow and the way it feels. And but stuff I like think that. the one that does, yeah. it does feel like flow. Like, yeah. it's a specific timing. Like, I, I was thinking about relationships the other day, and it was like, my significant, the significant romantic relationships I've had in my life, they had to happen like within the week that they started in order for them to be what they became. Mm -hmm. And so it's like these doors open at a specific time. You talk a lot about, hey, when this opportunity happens and like one of the things I admire most about you is just your unshakable belief in the outcome. Like you continue yeah. to do the morning routine on a daily basis and you don't even take the weekends off. It's just over and over and over again because you know it produces a specific outcome and your belief that it's going to happen. I've never seen where you've questioned or thought, hey, maybe this ain't going to work. Right. But eventually the doors open, the pieces come together and it's like block, block, block. And then things even if you to have move. to tweak, yeah. tweak something or tweak an action, it doesn't derail you from like the ultimate goal. Right. Or the method of which you're taking to get to that goal. You, you don't you don't just say, oh, I'm just gonna stop doing this. You just tweak whatever that this is because you know it's a meaningful part of, you know, the whole to get to where you're trying to go. Yeah, so while y'all are speaking, I'm thinking of um, like Michael Jordan, I'm thinking about his run 
you know, six titles and things like that. And I think that, you know, there was still so much, you know, adversity where things weren't, you know, that was connected to the whole you know, uh, dynasty, but there, it wasn't flow. There was so many different, you know, aspects to where things weren't running right. But, you know, that, you know what I'm saying? So I'm yeah. thinking about all that, but think it's still about, not being deterred. Think in about a sense. the games where he scored the most points. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you see it was just automatic, right? Yeah. He would catch on fire and it's just difference right. maker, difference that, maker. Th that aspect of flow, yeah, yeah, without question. But I'm, I'm saying that because when you, you spoke about belief and keep going through the rituals and not, you know, not never believing that it's not going to happen in spite of all the other things, losing his father and, you know, um, you know, the owners not wanting to pay and, you know, all those different type of things and maybe not seeing eye to eye with someone else or something like that, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I'm just you know, taking all that in, absorbing right. so, all that so in. So just, just real quick, what, what's flow? Because we talked about flow and we use it in, but people may not know what yeah. flow is. I mean, there's so many different applications. The English language is made up, right? So yeah. we, sure. we can define it however mm -hmm. we want. One yeah. way that people define it is when everything slows down and you can see things happening before <coughs> they happen, right? You, your ability to say, all right, that person's going to do this, this person's going to do that, and I'm going to be right here in order to be prepared for the opportunity. Another thing that I see as flow is, hey, this is the outcome that I want. I believe this is going to happen. For me, one of the outcomes is uh, my net worth is going to be $10 million. All right, so what is it actually going to take for me to have a net worth of $10 million? I can't work a job and get net worth of $10 million. So is it real estate? Is it business ownership and actually looking for those opportunities so those doors are open? The way I think about it is lights turning green, mm -hmm. right? Now, there will be times when the lights are red, mm -hmm. and that's temporary, yeah, right? And then it opens up, and it's your opportunity to continue down the path. And I, I think time is a part. I think the people you meet is a part. I think your access to resources is yeah. another part. Right. But when you start putting all those things together, um, things that I consider to be resources or time, talent, and treasures, mm -hmm. when those things come together, it's almost magical, yeah. the outcome yeah. that's created from it. Yeah. And it looks effortless. Like yeah, right. if you watch an artist mm -hmm. draw, who's like truly an artist, you don't see him doing a whole bunch of erasing. It's just kind of, yeah. and they're adjusting on the fly. And it's like, ah, I don't, you can see when they say, I don't really like that. And then they, make another make tweak right. kind of yeah. but they're still directionally correct and i think that's the yeah. biggest part i think people yeah. are looking for the plan and it's almost they expect it to be like a train track yeah like linear they expect it to be linear, linear. it's yeah, not that, that. Yeah. it's not that yes yeah. and Ebbs you think and about flows. right yeah. so water in a river and you got right. the rocks right like right. one of the things i like to do is go white water rafting and so you can try to force <laughs> it <laughs> go, <laughs> come on bro that's fun think about it think about it think about it think about it nice and serene if you're in the river right you yeah. can try to force the boat or you can force force the raft to go where the rock is. I ain't forcing shit. I, or you can I feel flow. you though. I feel you. Go, keep or you can that. flow you with yeah. the current and enjoy the ride. And it have you ever been white water rapping? I've been fuck that shit. Have you ever been white water rapping? I got a lot of lives that I do before I die. <laughs> and I ain't got time to waste. That ain't the way you're going to die, man. Right. No, I'm not, not with a good shit. guy. You, I, you seen the most, movies? You know, most, niggas be oh, going in the, the mountains movies. with the bad people. <laughs> they, you said the movies? Come back. Yeah, Bruh, man. Most of the rivers you can stand up in. Word? Yeah. Well, I can't well, can swim. swim. I better be able to. You I mean, swim? I swim enough to save my life, but you can be in the mouth on some rocks and all. Yeah, and you got a life jacket on. I'm going with y'all. And when you got a guy. When we do our men's summit and we in one of these mountains, nigga, yeah, your niggas better oh, save God. me if I get in that damn boat. Man. I tell you that right now. Oh, God. I, oh, shit, I just told you. No, now, yeah. Hold on. Let me back it up real quick to a serious moment. Let me back it up real quick because um, you, you talked about like relationships and timing and stuff like that. And you know, I believe all of that is divine. And, um, you know, uh, not too many people know that we live in the same neighborhood. And I met you when we were both like jogging, like yeah. out exercising in the neighborhood. Like, um, like just kind of talk about like that, like the meeting, divine meet. So like, 
I, I I like to reverse engineer the the connections. So you'll because, never have any divine so, meanings on a on a on a river. That's what you're saying. So you just you just point, eliminated you just eliminated flow. you just eliminated I don't know how many potential hey, divine meetings because you won't get on a river. The cabin for the what else won't you do? Joint in one of the mountains. Then I'm there, and I'm, it's going to be somebody that I'm going to meet on the joint, which is I can't say won't happen. All right. There's All right. been many a times when people have fallen out the raft that. Yeah, yeah pulled, nice I, I've pulled personally it. pulled them back, and now they're your best friend. Well, that's cool. I, I live life. with one of them. That's, all I'm saying. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying right there. Oh, I, shit. So I've experienced flow. I think flow is um, like a back to back, a series of mm -hmm. can't miss moments. Absolutely. Over an, an extended period of time. Oh yeah. That you couldn't orchestrate mm -hmm. on your own. Accord. And then no, but then you try to duplicate it in whatever mindset or whatever environment or whatever is going on in your life and you cannot duplicate it. It's just like everything lined up. And again, it was just these can't miss moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to back to back to back to back to yeah, back. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I divine the same way. Alignment on fire. You know what I mean? Alignment but, on but, fire. But you, you know, that's, that's, that's coaches speak, man. It's, it's, well, um, I got to become a coach. Man. Fire, I got to teach me. Y'all teach me how to be a coach, sports. man. Y'all teach me how to be a coach. Got the game from you. Got nah, the game man. from William Wesley. You can never check me. You know the drill, man. Yo, but yeah, we were literally, um, you know, uh, in the neighborhood. And um, I think you approached me about a podcast or something like that. I don't know. It was something. Yeah. Oh, we, we, so did you know who he was when y'all met? Yeah, by virtue of other neighbors. So I, what I will tell you is I only talk to three people that live in our neighborhood. And one recently because I met him at the gym, right? I only it's, know one neighbor in my neighborhood. And that's the crazy part, right? So I've lived here since 2016, and like AWOL is my connection to the community. And, you know, people have no idea what we've done or yeah. who we are connected to or any of that stuff, which I'm totally okay with. But yeah, it was, hey, this guy runs a huge gym, he's impacting the community. You need to meet him. Mm. Oh, okay. And I just happened that on that day. And then, you know, we talk here and there. And then you made a comment one day about some of the stuff you've been going through. And I think you might have said on the podcast and I it cut me deep because it was like this man's doing positive things. He's impacting the community and not just the neighborhood, but just the Greensboro community at large and even wider than that on social media. And I wasn't even aware of the burden that he was carrying. I wasn't even there to support him in what he was going through. And I know what it's like when to wake up and <laughs> the person you're expecting to be there is not there. So I was like, I got to figure out how I could contribute in a meaningful way because it's rare to have people around you who actually care about you and on the same path as you as far as from my perspective, you work in the end suffering, right? I think there's a lot of people who are trapped in bodies that are causing them a tremendous amount of pain and through the resilience training that you give us, and people will call it working out, but I, I think it's so much higher than that. Um, you help us figure out what we really want, what we really believe, and that we're stronger and tougher than what we actually may believe because we've built these comfortable lives mm -hmm. with our sugary drinks and <laughs> swear. Uh, he said, I swear. <laughs> swear. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I, ain't, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm on a pretty cool path right now, but I ain't, I ain't 35 down. I ain't faking the fun. Or is it 40? It's close to about 40 now. It's 40. Yeah. 40. It's 40. Now. He yeah, said it. He said yeah, it. Yeah, As a matter of fact, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's 40. It's 40. Uh, do you think it has, it has a lot to do with that? Um, you know, you, you have this morning, like and and nighttime, you know, a uh, uh, ritual and mantra that you you say all the time, oh, man. And yeah, we kind of dissected it a little bit. Yeah, the last I couple switched days, it up right? since since, yeah. since you and I had a conversation, man. I, yeah. I didn't switch it up. So yeah, I had the um, it Can was all about it? I am. Uh, I'm rich. I'm blessed. I'm walking in the fullness of God. I'm debt free. I'm healthy. I'm wealthy. And the days of barely making it in any area of my life are over. I'm six three. I weigh two hundred and fifty pounds. And I'm 17% body fat. Mm. I love it. Say it every day, but nah, man. Let's so, switch it up. Yeah, let's switch it up. Well, I didn't switch it. I, no, I still, I still say that. You still say that one, but yes. you got some other stuff. Yeah, because uh, we talked about just, um, um, just um, different affirmations 
um, tied to your chakras, um, just tied to manifestation. And so I am is, is good, but then you have, um, I understand you have, I see Mm -hmm. you have, um, I won't, um, part of our homework was to give you some, I won'ts. um, you have, I love, or I feel, um, so I've incorporated those now. Nice. And so, so the I am was the root that kind of, I am that kind of woke you up a little bit. Yeah. You got that information. Correct. And, and realized that the, the I am chakra was the root chakra. But I think, I think what, what kind of jarred you with that information that it was like the lowest one yeah, or something like low, that. Yeah. But then, but then I, I think that was in context though. though. You know, the one though that I loved the most. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Say again. It said it's identity. The root right. chakra is identity. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. The one I love the most is, and the one that is like, <laughs> it, it gives me goosebumps every time I do it, is I see. Yeah. No. We've always said you got to see it before, before you, you see, see it, it yeah. in order to see yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Right. But now when I'm specific and I say I see a $100 million net worth, yeah. oh man, that's, yeah. oh, it that's, opens up. That's totally different. But it's so, but the I see is the third eye. Right. So now you actually open up the subconscious mind. But all of these are tied to like a self word. Like, so even when you talked about the I am, which is the root, is uh, self-preservation. So when you start to see, so we had an interesting conversation. I think I carried it over with you too. And I said, you know, I'm dealing with people that are on the lowest vibration when they come in. And you hear me with the I am a lot because I have to meet them where they are. And, you know, when you're at the bottom, then, you know, the first rule of survival is what? Self-preservation. Self-preservation. Right. So I got to teach them how to heal through I am's. Right. Because we got to heal at the root. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And there's a reason why they never go from that root uh, level to the next joint. To So so you just went from the root yeah, to I the third I, eye. Yeah. I mean, I know there are several no, no, in between. No, I, I know. But what I'm saying is, so your level of consciousness has expanded so much with one context of information, one little bit of information, and you've probably went to, you know, the way you study and, you know, gather information, which I know you do. And your level of consciousness has expanded so much that you were here and then you fell in love with here. So now you're one level away from the crown, which is the- the, I understand. Right. right. I understand. (laughs) I understand what it takes. Boom. To see what I'm going to be. that's self-knowledge though. Yeah. See, that's knowledge mm. of self now. Once you get to there, you get to transcendence. We talk about this, Maslow. We talk yeah, about yeah. Maslow's. Yeah. And if you think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the base is survival. 100%. You need food, water, and shelter. You need food, clothing, and shelter yeah. at the survival base, which is preservation. All this shit ties in together. And that's why I was like, yo, Ra, I got all this shit. I shot Ra the YouTube <laughs> yes. link. I'm like, yo, sure the content, I'm telling him about right. the content. I'm like, look, man, I did this and five then, years and then ago. And I'm like, where yeah, the that? world needs to know this. Like we got in the bag. It's in the bag. It's, it's in the yeah. cellar on the that. shelf. Nah, let me brush this off. Right. But what's cool though is like my model, right? We've got six levels in my model, and self-image is the first one. And so you Love talk it. about the I am, right? Mm-hmm. But if people don't have the right relationship with themselves, with self, yeah. yeah. They can't interact with other people with yeah. any integrity. Yeah, yeah. They can't can interact they? with people you with any integrity. Right. And so, yeah. you know, you got to write that ship. And then you can move up to the relationship. That's why I don't fuck with none of them. <laughs> That's why Ooh. the the Maybachs and all that other shit, yeah. I, right through that shit. We, yeah. This the game we played in the street. Yeah. We had to come with all this shit just to get noticed. And I was thinking about that too, man. Because I, I was thinking about, and, and I guess I'm, I'm, I'm still searching for I'm still searching for our culture. Oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> legitimately our culture. And I... You're not so, satisfied with the fried food I'm, to match I'm, up with the Ikigai? No, I'm not. I'm, oh. not, I'm not satisfied <laughs> okay. with that. I heard that last I'm not week. Satis- oh, you heard that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, what I... The thought that I had, right, was the subcultures that exist, right? Mm, okay. And so, something came up that I had to deal with. And I was like, how would the streets handle this? Mm. Right. That's good. Not saying is 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 better or worse, but I was like, right. well, how would the streets handle this, right? Mm-hmm. And then how would they handle this in the country, in the South? Mm-hmm. Then how would it, how would they handle this up top, right? And so I was like trying to explore that with the subcultures to see, I don't know. And again, I'm just I'm trying to 
legitimize the the culture, our culture for real, for real, and not what somebody gave us. And so, um, yeah, I kind of explored that. Yeah. And so when you said how that, would the have handled it though? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I got to I got to talk to L about it. So <laughs> okay. He'll, he'll, he'll give me the game on how the streets would have handled it. Um, but yeah, that's you know, and like like this whole nil stuff, right? Yeah, so, yeah. and even with the the like you touched on this like the Maybachs and I, so. There, there was a point in my life when the shiny things were important, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And so I got the shiny thing. Then it became dull, and I was like, "I don't need this shiny thing." Now my shiny thing is my net worth, yeah, my legacy. Those are my shiny things yeah. now, right? But it's hard to preach that or to teach that to somebody who's never experienced the shiny thing. Oh, everybody wants to reach financial independence, only to find out that it's empty. They don't care nothing about what you're talking about with self-actualization if they're trying to figure out those yeah. lower order things on Maslow's mm. hierarchy of needs. Right. You have to get the pot at the end of the gold, right. or the pot at the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, rainbow yeah. in order to realize that you don't actually care about that pot of gold. Mm. There, there is nothing that you will ever be able to say that will convince somebody who doesn't have it. Right. That they need to, and then the other, and then you know, and even with my kids or family members, they're like, "But you had this, you did that, you." That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, you, you, you. Why are you telling me not to spend all this money on been Louis down that hallway. and you? Hey, you know, you did that. <laughs> I've been down the hallway. You know the saying? door is and locked, so, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but let me tell you what I learned. So, so doing that's, that. So, Rod, with that being said, like, if I know you would teach Raleigh something different, like. What do you think the conversations are with, like, with Dion and her son, with his son about that? Because you are going to parent your daughter totally different, even if you got the the money, right? Because yeah. you have the money. I, I think, like, I you, think, I think he would he would teach them this the same thing because you know I've seen because they got so much content. I've seen some interactions about like restaurant bills and things like that. I ain't spending no four hundred dollars. We ain't never coming back here. That kind of thing. Talking about and you know, Dion has a gazillion dollars. Um but again and they're they're so young and they just they, they gotta have the shiny thing. They gotta have the ice. They gotta have the because the people that influence them got yeah. the shiny things, even though they ain't pay for them, even though they didn't they're not real shiny things. They got right, you know, right, they right. got the the chains or whatever that's fake and you know they so got the I'm running around now though trying back. to teach people about like like how to be able to identify things so that shiny things don't actually, you know, trick you. If, well, you, if you don't know what something look like, you won't be able to tell it when you see it. And this goes into the coaching industry and why it's got a bad name. I remember up until two years ago, I wouldn't call myself a coach. Yeah. Right. Because it, it was just, it felt slimy. It felt snake oil. It felt sleazy. And then I realized like, no, that's what I do. Yeah, yeah, like I'm, I'm helping people go to a level that they might not even be able to see for themselves when they show up. Yeah, but if they don't know what that actually looks like, because it's easy to fool somebody that's behind you. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. But if you're sitting with somebody and and they watch fake because you have watches, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. If their watch isn't real, you yeah. can look at their watch and yeah. you know pretty quickly like yeah. that's not authentic, right? Right. But if somebody has never been in a Cullinan or they've never been in a 10,000 square foot house or they like mm -hmm. run down the list of things. It's really easy to, to trick them, to trick them <laughs> into believing that yeah. all of these things are giving them happiness. And I'm going deep on yeah, happiness right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 that stuff can't give them happiness. I'm, and the, and the, the thing hole. about it is nobody's impressed with the person that has the shiny thing. It's They're impressed things. with the shiny thing. They go, oh my God, that's a, is that a, is that a, you know, a Lamborghini? They ain't impressed because you got out the person that got out of the Lamborghini. They're impressed with the Lamborghini. They ain't impressed with the, you know, the paddock. They I mean the person wearing the paddock. Right. They're impressed with the paddock. Absolutely right? right? So but I can't, you know, you can't convey that message to especially someone who's never had a paddock that's on their way of getting a paddock and somebody's never had the Lamborghini and they're on their way to getting the Lamborghini. It's hard for that message to stick. I'm still going to buy a Lamborghini. Like it doesn't matter what anybody yeah, yeah, says to me. But, but, but you're going to buy the Lamborghini yeah. when you can afford the Lamborghini. A thousand percent. Right. You're not going to buy the Lamborghini. Um, who, who, what was the artist? T-Pain. Yeah. He got repo. No. Well, well before that, when T, when T-Pain bought his Lamborghini, he tells a story about how he emptied his bank account to buy the Lamborghini. Yeah. 
what? You empty your, so therefore you couldn't afford a Lamborghini, right? So when you buy your Lamborghini, you will be able to afford at least five. And my hope is that people will be impressed by the person that gets out. And so here's the thing, right? Why do you hope that? Because I want to be a person of value. I want to be a person. Because you have a Lamborghini, you're a person of value. The Lamborghini doesn't matter. It's just a physical manifestation of the value that I created for other people. Oh, my for bank me. account is that for me. And I, so th here's the thing that I have wrestled with for the past five years. Yeah. If you I want to a nice be Tesla anyway, but anyway. well, we, we, we like vehicles that that's my thing. I like things that go fast, but my struggle has been, my struggle has been, if I don't know that you're wealthy, mm -hmm. like real wealth, not, mm -hmm. not rich, mm -hmm. you're wealthy. How will I ever be able to model what you did in order to get there? If there's no symbolization, if there's no signaling mm -hmm. that you have, uh, how do I, how do I know who to go to when I got other people who are running their ads with their well, rented cars? Well, birds of a feather flock. But and how do I even get into it? So you're going to, yeah, people are going to, people are going to study and they're going to hang around and spend time with people that are in proximity of the individuals or the actual individuals. Cause here's the thing. Let me tell you what I know about both of you guys. What I know about both of you guys is people may not approach you, but you're approachable, right? <laughs> I know that. So you'd be surprised how many people will never get close to the person you just described because they didn't ask but they don't know to ask, right? Because if you blend, if you blend in with the crowd, like you pull up in the truck, mm -hmm. right? There's nothing that would suggest to me that you've had multiple exits. There would be nothing that well, we've, suggests- we've told people that, right? So we've told people that, right? Uh, what, uh, over 260, 70,000 people have seen this. Yeah. Three? or four have reached out to me directly to say, hey, I'm doing this. What do you think? Can you help me with this? What are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on this? Why? I, I get it. I think you're saying the same thing. I get it. You, you're, you're asking why they haven't reached out. You're saying that you're available it's if somebody because of reaches what you said, out. That they don't, see the, they don't see the actual riches. They, like, they don't see what they think is rich. They don't see it. So now they don't really believe that you have that wealth of knowledge that could actually help them make multiple Which is more themselves. valuable than anything. Which is more valuable. That's why I said riches. I lie, your boy that you know, right. I shared with y'all yesterday. Things that his life has changed. Right. Because he was on his way out and now he's on his way like as the model. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I ain't give him no money. Right. Just gave him gay. And then we only had to tweak one thing with him. Well, it's always and he you're went from just the, that away. Yeah. It's always one or two things away. But the one little tweak went from him at the bottom to him at the top. A thousand percent. Just one little thing. Yeah. Right? And so, and it, and it was literally him saying, ah, you, know, you know what he had to be? He Humble. had to be vulnerable. <laughs> oh, that's the thing. He had to be vulnerable world. to say, this is where I am because this is a new gig. Um, I thought I'd kill it. I'm not killing it. And as a matter of fact, they're pulling me in the office saying, yo, you need to kill it in a short period of time because if you don't, this is what's going to happen. What do you think, Rod? And then from there, now he's to the moon. top of the game. Vulnerable. He had to be vulnerable. But Kim, Ooh. I don't like the humble oh, word. Yeah, we don't don't oh, take me down this path. Of, we, you open up a can of words. Don't take me down this path. Let's go down the humble. <laughs> let's go down the vulnerable <laughs> path. You open up a I can like of words with that one with these two. Hey, <laughs> so, but how as men in America? Mm. Where can we be vulnerable? Because many men would say you can't be vulnerable with your woman, right? Because she's going to feel like you're weak and she can't you can be follow vulnerable your leadership. Anywhere. You, can be, you just got to be willing to, like um, like the show, Ptolemy Carr. I love the show, the characters, Ptolemy Carr. I forget the name of, we'll have the name of the um, the show. But um, there's a line in there that has stuck with me that has like, again, I just added it to the library of, of quotes and things. He said, um, tell me the truth. So I can act accordingly. That's all we can ask for. Just tell me the truth, right? Don't try to sugarcoat it. 
Don't try to dress it up. Tell me the truth so I can act accordingly. Mm. But take me so, down the hole. So, so when it comes to vulnerability, right? I'm going to tell you my truth, right? And then you act the way you act. But when you act the way you act, you're telling me your truth. 100%. And so now I'm going to act accordingly. So that means you might not ever hear me give you anything ever again. You might be on your way out like Lynch's, you know, he did his inventory and a bunch of, you know, people are on their way Making out. Making the you, transition. Exactly. So when you tell me, when you communicate to me what your truth is relative to my vulnerability, yeah, I'm going to act accordingly. But how do you even know that it's safe for you to be vulnerable in this yeah. space? I, I, mean, don't, I don't think, I think that's an oxymoron when it comes to vulnerability. I don't think you can be safe and vulnerable at the same time. I think you have to expose yourself to be vulnerable. 100%. But is the environment, I mean, you, you've been in the streets, right? Mm -hmm. So like how, how do you know when it's okay? Uh, I, don't, I don't, I'm bad. Right? Like I'm conditioned to. You, you always keep your shoes on, right? Yeah. yeah. You don't ever take your shoes off. Until you, so you go to bed. Yeah, I don't definitely have, not wearing I don't no Crocs. slippers. You don't wear slippers. I don't even run. have any. I don't even have shower shoes. I don't have none of that shit. I'm not going to let you know how you can hurt me. Like, but there's a part of life where, as men, we got to take off the armor at some point. 100%. I don't think you, maybe you can sleep in it, but I. Nah. And, but the point for me is I, I just think there is so much stigma around how you have to be macho, right? You got to be, you know, a top G and some of the other stuff that's being thrown around out here. And I, I just don't. I've got I got two girls, man. Like I don't want to show them a man that doesn't have it doesn't emote, mm -hmm. right? And I, I like being stoic, but in the same breath, I think it's important for people to actually know, hey, that hurt, or, you know, this was something I'm uncomfortable about, or here's how I'm struggling. Right. Because that, that weight gets heavy. Right. And if you don't have anybody around you, and I think this part is probably the most important, for, important part for me, a lot of people throw around the mental health thing, and I keep mentioning resilience, but mental resilience is the difference between the people who take their life and the people who figure it out, yeah. right? Because they feel like the pressure is too crushing, and your ability to absorb the stress and work your way through the trauma and actually connect with people on a level that allows you to get the support you need in order to go to the next level when you're tired. Like mm -hmm. that, that person that's holding out that cup of water if you're running a marathon or something like that. Um, or even like I'm doing burpees or something and you know, you'll help me up from time to time when it was like, man. He helps you up? He, he's helped me up. <laughs> I can think of three times specifically where I thought I was gonna die. And he reached his hand down, grabbed me, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm not on that, that gave level. me extra breath. I can do an extra one or on two calories on the next I'm thing as that. a result. Yeah, I'm not on that level yet. You, you, never, well, you me. weighed a little bit more back when any, he was doing that. You weighed a little hands, more. hands, let me help you up. It's like, yeah, why you ain't, Rod, you got 20 <laughs> seconds left. You got that's 10 a, seconds left. Hey, what you doing? That's a whole set. You ain't got, you get right. <laughs> See, that's what help, I, help is that. That's a whole set. That, that was going to take me out. You weighed a little more. Ooh, now that bro. you're down 40 pounds, you bro. know, it might not be. The, dis the, the load ain't so heavy. Crazy. The discrimination is crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, thank you. Thank you. It is discrimination. Black is it? Black. Yeah, it's discriminating. Well, you weigh too much for me to help up. Man. <laughs> that's discrimination. That's body <laughs> shaming. That's all that. All rolled into one. Oh, uh, we might get canceled for that. Maybe we need to cut that out. We need to cut it out. No, you know, we're talking about, uh, listen, the end game is about what? Closing that knowledge gap yeah. with, with real stuff, right? Real mm -hmm. practical experiences. And, and that's a practical experience. You get helped up mm -hmm. in the same gym that I don't get helped up. <laughs> and so uh, that's real. Oh, man. And he that's might real. not ever help me again, but the times that he helped me, I appreciate that's it. That's good stuff, man. I'm glad he helped you, though. Everybody needs a hand from time to time to be be lift up um but it's you, fun that hand though yeah. that hand can come back and smack you in the face right Absolutely. it's like you remember what i did for you or yeah. you wouldn't be who you are if it weren't for me is that true uh, that's that's when i go to is it true and so you guys were talking about the ic's I and heard. the ID ams and so on my, my affirmations are the truth hole. the truth is i say okay go make another hole they say they made Jerome. You should be like, okay, go make another Jerome. <laughs> if that's true, that's when I just go to, man, I just go, is it true? It's not true? All right, let's rock. Let's keep moving. You helped me through something heavy on that one. Yeah, ain't true. 
That's all you got. That's all you got to try to slow me down. So yeah, man, we've been on this. You know, Coach Coach Lynch has gotten us on this um, this amazing program, man, where the results are ridiculous. And I think he's about to drop some interviews of some people that have done some phenomenal things. Um, So it's a very very serious and very very serious topic. But I got a I got a I got a silly question. What can't you wait to eat? <laughs> Bro, I'm going to tell you mine. It's two things. Okay. Fried chicken and Krispy Kreme donuts. Oh, oh man. Wow. So we went to Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> two days ago, and they didn't have the glazed donuts. So she got five minis and ate four. Mm. And that bag with the last mini was just floating around the kitchen for oh, like two days. That's hard. What you do? Did and you I get- brought it upstairs, and I sat it down. And I was eating my fruit. Mm. And then she got up and she grabbed a bag. She grabbed a mini and it made it go away. Nice. While I was eating my fruit. But if that, it would have been there when I finished would, eating my plum lunch, I would have had a mini. You know what, though? But you, you made it through the will and the won't. Mm. <laughs> that was heavy, wasn't it? You made that it through the will and the won't. Coach, how you, what, what's the will and the won't? Man, look, man, sometimes... You ain't going to have the will to to get it. You ain't always going to be in the spirit. You ain't always going to be motivated. And people never talk about the won't. They never talk about, they never address the flesh. Mm. Like, we all got, you know, we get in the spirit. We can do some stuff. We get the will. You know, we motivated. We can do some stuff. But what about the stuff that you won't do? Mm. What about the stuff that are untied, that are, un like, that just mess up everything because of one moment you know what i'm saying so we 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 went in in our group uh, and we started to you know just write down some things that we we won't do this is this is so deep and i didn't actually connect the dots until you just said that because i i, I told you i need the benefit of the doubt right i need people to give me the benefit of the doubt with my intention on whatever they may interpret in their interaction with me and the thing that i've been testing my 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 internal fortitude, my Mm -hmm. intestinal fortitude Mm -hmm. was, am I a person that would do that? Right. And so pick a thing, right? If somebody's accusing you of something that is not of your character, are you capable of doing it? Right. And I think people are capable of doing all kinds of things depending on the situation they're put in. But am I a person that would do that? And so the, I won't Mm -hmm. is so powerful because it is, that that's not in my character. Like you know for a fact, if somebody came and said, "Yo, Jerome didn't pay those people that did the work for him," mm-hmm. I don't know if he wouldn't do that. Right, right. Uh, nah, that, that's not him. And I, I just want to live a life because we were talking about this earlier. I just want to live a life where if people um, said something about me. The other people that were in the room who had any interaction with me would be like, nah, "Who are you talking about?" Right. That's something he wouldn't do. Mind, do. I know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you said something about the will and the won't um, that like hit me like a ton of bricks. It was something about the will is for the daytime or something, and the oh, won't. Yeah, I think I was talking about how you were alone. Like yeah, yeah. You boy, you you make it through the day. And sometimes, you know, it takes that, that the strength of that will. But at nighttime is when a lot of stuff pops up, man. And like the things Dunkin start running. Yeah, I mean, whatever's in the pantry, yeah. um, you know, you got. Uh, but, but, but what did you, you got, say? You said the won't is for the night. The, the will is for the daytime. Yeah, and the won't. But your won't, won't has to kick in at got, night. Yeah, the, the won't got to get you watching at night. Or yeah, something like man, that. you got to figure. You got guys and girls or whoever. They might be in a faithful relationship or something like that. But at nighttime, man, they might just call up the old thing or something mm-hmm. like that. And you gotta have the want yeah. power to actually, you know what I mean, to keep you going and growing with the relationship that you're in right now. You know what I'm saying? And that goes a, a ton of different ways. Like my pop told me when I was locked up, you know, I was like 120 months. I called, I said, pop, they just gave me 120 months. Did you hear that? What the hell? I don't even know how long is that? He's like, man, shit. He's like, man, fuck all that shit. Don't worry about that. I'm like, what you mean? It's 120 months. He said, all you gotta do is one day and one night at a time. Mm-hmm. So when you get wisdom and knowledge from other people, they say, you know, just take it one day at a time. Nobody ever told you about the freaky shit that happens at night. 
Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it be some, st like, think about the thoughts, like, right? It's a devil's workshop, I don't mind. It's nighttime. The hustle and bustle ain't there. You sitting down, you sitting yeah. somewhere, and all this dumb shit is going through your mind at night. So what do you do? You try to fucking escape the shit by doing something that you probably wouldn't have done if you In the daytime. Were, there you go. The light was shining. Yep. Yeah. And because because when it get dark, you yeah. think ain't nobody watching and it's only you and it's just your thoughts and then oh well a little bit won't hurt and then next thing you know the thing that you you know really want goes out the window because of some shit that you you know the want power right the want yeah. power want wow. power risk wow. everything for yep. something yep. that you didn't even want that's it that's it gotcha. what y'all need help with man what y'all what, mm. what can I do to help you guys out what y'all need help with man I'm, I'm, I need to scale this thing man ASAP, <laughs> you get to it out there, man. You got to be out there to the masses. Scale, 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 like scale. scale. What you need help with, Jerome? I stay on this weight loss journey, man. Oof. It's uh, and I don't even it's it's releasing old things, mm -hmm. right? Um, but this you, is the final you, frontier. Been, like in, in in your business or whatever. Have you have you since you've been on the um. The program have you have you said oh i i did this and I, I i felt like this when i had to not eat the donut so yeah i can have you applied i guess the the discipline and the the for me it's been emotional stuff it's like like if i'm on the bike in the morning and it's a 45 minute ride and i'm only 32 minutes in i can get off the bike ain't nobody gonna see me get off the bike I can well i don't know we share you the watch sending me the alert yeah. i'm gonna see I'm going to see if you don't finish. Oh, yeah, I don't care. Okay. Oh, well, okay. I mean, I care, but I can say, yeah, my watch was messing up, and I didn't. I didn't yeah, but that ha that's happening yeah, yeah. more and more so these days. So, so for no, us, true. though, we're in a, we're in a whole other group, and right. then he's in two groups, and then we actually have accountability on those numbers. Right. So we actually got to produce those numbers, and then we understand, like, kind of who we are in those groups, mm -hmm. and then those numbers actually affect – what the people underneath of us actually uh, do or don't gotcha. do. So, you know, yeah. when we say accountability makes you 80% more active, it's because, like, the environment that we're placing, you know, these right. individuals. But in I guess place. my question is more so about mental and yeah. the, mm -hmm. the the mental fortitude and the, the mental uh, discipline. I've applied that to, like, yeah. everyday I've, life. When I was created, like, I don't feel like doing this, what, but you did that, that is, so go ahead and do that. So, yeah, so those basically, like, being on this – you know, kind of gave me the confidence to create these couple tiers mm -hmm. um, now in the programs and uh, kind of um, not devaluing, you know, you know, the service and what I do right. and and doing it with confidence now. Like, yeah, this is this is what we got. This is what it is. Um, so. So for me to answer your question, not so much business. I We had an exit earlier this year. So like most ooh, of the ooh, summer, we didn't do yeah. a whole lot of hard work it's been retooling and recalibrating but uh, the focus has been for me on health and re my romantic relationship and gotcha. trying to figure out how to make that so solid that when we go to this new level like it's bulletproof and so what it's forced for me is when things are uncomfortable mm. to stay in it yeah Right. And then just work through it and realize, like, on the other side of this, there's always relief. That's good. But in, in you have more capacity. Like, the thought of not eating meat for a week 12 weeks ago right. sounded just ridiculous. ridiculous yeah. Right. And now, after doing it and being on day three and having more energy than I ever had when I was eating whatever I thought was healthy in the past it's just like you lying to yourself about the majority of the things you say you need or you think you want right and you're only doing those things because you were programmed to do them by probably somebody else and so it's forced me to unplug from a lot of things and reconsider That's good. what the actual inputs are good, in order to mm -hmm. create the outcome that I want to create and the other take thing control is of those inputs 100 yeah. percent, right and then if you run the right program yeah then you get you get the, the right outcome and so that for me has just been so 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 
um, liberating mm. because like we feel we create these prisons we create these boxes we put ourselves in these matrices where we think it's got to be that way right and i i personally believe like you can unplug from all of that if you're willing to right and then you can recreate the life that you truly desire so yeah. there's been just in my house that's yeah. that's and really me and that's really free will Oh. What you're talking about? That's that's truly free will. A lot of people walk well, free around. Free won't, huh? Free won't. Free won't. If you're gonna free have a won't. will, you oh, gotta have won't. won't. Yeah, Facts. yeah. You gotta have a corresponding won't. Facts. So, but a it, lot of people walk around thinking they have free will and thinking they have free won't. But what they know. say, what they do, has been influenced by right. someone else, right. and so it's it's really not free, right? right. And it's, it's not, been, it's not and what it's you been came influenced by the, the the deaf, dumb, and blind culture. Yeah, exactly. Which exactly. you just taking any program and running it. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. that's why I'd be like, yo, we ain't right. got no culture. We got Bye. soul food, which is giving us all the A1Cs and the... <laughs> all of the things. Yeah, all of the fucks. The diabetes. <laughs> yeah. All of the things. Exactly. And that's all we got. And y'all claiming it too. Like, we that's go, why I'd be over this bitch like, no, We go to funerals and eat the same food at the repast. Same shit. And kill the cat. Pass the hot sauce. And bro. then they looking at us like, yo, why you ain't, you, oh. you crazy? Why you, why you eating that? Well, because it, anyway. it feels good, right? And yeah. so I think I that's. I swear that fried chicken feel good, bro. But honestly, though, on some real shit, you, you actually talked about staying in it. And if you look at, like, the levels of the way we, you, you can look at how everything is parallel. Like, so you look at, like, you, you're saying, I got to make sure that this is bulletproof so when we get to the next level. And that requires for, you know, some, you know, uncomfortable stuff to be handled now or whatever. So go through an uncomfortable period so that we grow from this and boom, when we get here, we're, we're stronger or more resilient or whatever. And if you think about how our workout is, it's actually the same it way. Sense. Now you're looking at the diet. It's the same way. I keep switching it up on you, but you keep going to another level. Your joint keep dropping and you like, and you don't know what's coming next and y'all eager to be like, yo, what's next? But um, you ever heard that Frederick um, Nietzsche, Nietzsche quote? where he says um you know to live is to suffer and people heard it from dmx to live is to suffer but to survive is to find meaning in the suffering mm -hmm. so you literally just kind of uh, broke that down by staying in the suffering because you actually have to find the meaning in it right so to to live or to survive or to persevere right self-preservation to so to so stay in it to be staying is you got you got to survive mm -hmm. so you live but now you got to figure out what was the lesson in, in it. that yeah when yeah. you was in it and stuff like that and you're figuring that out because mm -hmm. you're like no these inputs you know what i'm saying they not really no good so i gotta unplug get new inputs so i can get new energy to come out to get the shit that i actually want but you will ultimately get new beliefs new beliefs and you become a new person and i mean i mess with people every morning when they come in the gym i say you ready to die today because you got to get rid you got to shed the old person mm -hmm. right you got to be willing to give up who you are right now to become who you want to be mm -hmm. and if you're not willing to do that then what are we doing right mm -hmm. what are we doing i swear man my thing is just one more rep one more <laughs> one more you can do one more until i hear that lady counting down it's okay on to the next catch one. your breath one more step yeah. one more step I'm, I'm reading that vibe you know in the morning as soon as you come in i know when you i know the walk i know the, the energy low i know the whole joint and then i gotta be an asshole to kind of flip it and change it and shit like that you're good but, at that but that's why i never um that the music never changes mm. it's always on the affirmations or the meditations or the um the god frequency mm. and you know what i'm saying like you never really kind of it's, it's, it's that routine. You just got to keep going. You got to right. keep doing it. Gotta keep doing it. Got to yeah. keep doing it. But I believe in it, too. <laughs> it's cool. It works. Yeah. Cool. What else we got, man? I think that's a wrap, no, man. man. How you? You live real quick before we go. Oh, yeah, how man, you? I'm, what do you I, need? I got a lot like, what's going, going on, on right now? I need some lot. order right now. I need some order, and I need... Um, um, what else do I need? Uh... What is, your, what is your I see affirmation before we leave real quick? Because I know you went to the oh, I got I several. See, you got I, a couple. You know, yeah. I, I see 250 one. pounds. Yeah. From a, I see myself um, completely healthy. I see a $100 million net worth. A um, bunch of C's. I love it. Centimillionaire. Mm. Yeah. I 
I love it. Just a couple, love it. Love it. couple tweaks, man. Take us out of here, man. Couple tweaks. Come hey, on, yo, man. thank y'all so much for joining us, man. Jerome, man, it was a pleasure it was an and an yeah, honor. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Wow. you are dope. And Max, man, I don't care what they say about you. You dope, man. God bless all of them. Okay. Yeah, God bless you need all them all, Yo, right? I know we joked in the beginning about, you know, coaches and shit like that, but I don't, you know, we have to use that term, but I don't believe like neither one of y'all coaches and I don't think it's a title that actually suits, you know, both of you because I know what both of you do. I think you're both change agents Thank you, and agents of change. And, you know, I just think that uh, the coach is like not – deserving like you know what i'm saying like doesn't even Sensei, yeah you, you can't even put that in front of neither one of your name so you know we got to use it because you know it looks goofy it's to put. Yeah. yeah 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 some other stuff up there but just know that like there's another level above you know above that coach which is you know an agent of change and, yeah and, i which believe is that i believe that yo we just want to thank y'all for uh tuning into another show um do us a favor man we tell you we ask you for to pay us one thing and that's to pay attention um, mm -hmm. go to wherever you listen to your podcast. You can find the in game podcast. Uh, please give us like five stars, man. Give us a five star rating. Um, if you're feeling this, man, leave some comments, uh, go to YouTube, please like, um, please subscribe, you know, hit the bell, you know, talk to us in the comments. We talk back. I think the people <laughs> that have, you know, left comments, you know, that we talk back. And, um, with that, man, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Rod Brown. I'm Lynch Hunt. I'm Jerome Myers. <laughs> and we out. Peace. Yeah.